In mathematics, a lattice is a partially ordered set in which every two elements have a unique supremum and a unique infimum. An example is given by the natural numbers, partially ordered by divisibility, for which the unique supremum is the least common multiple and the unique infimum is the greatest common divisor. Lattices can also be characterized as algebraic structures satisfying certain axiomatic identities. Since the two definitions are equivalent, lattice theory draws on both order theory and universal algebra. Semi-lattices include lattices, which in turn include Hating and Boolean algebras. These lattice-like structures all admit order theoretic as well as algebraic descriptions. Lattices as partially ordered sets. If is a partially ordered set, and SL is an arbitrary subset, then an element UL is said to be an upper bound of S if S U for each SS. A set may have many upper bounds, or none at all. An upper bound U of S is said to be its least upper bound, or join, or supremum, if UX for each upper bound X of S. A set need not have a least upper bound, but it cannot have more than one. Duly, LL is said to be a lower bound of S if LS for each SS. A lower bound L of S is said to be its greatest lower bound, or meet, or infimum, if XL for each lower bound X of S. A set may have many lower bounds, or none at all, but can have at most one greatest lower bound. A partially ordered set is called a joined semilattice and a meet semilattice if each two element subset A, B, L has a join and a meet, denoted by a B and a B, respectively, is called a lattice if it is both a join and a meet semilattice. This definition makes an binary operations. Both operations are monotone with respect to the order. A1A2 and B1B2 implies that A1B1A2B2 and A1B1A2B2. It follows by an induction argument that every non-empty finite subset of a lattice has a join and a meet. With additional assumptions, further conclusions may be possible. See completeness for more discussion of this subject. That article also discusses how one may rephrase the above definition in terms of the existence of suitable Galois connections between related, partially ordered sets, an approach of special interest for the category theoretic approach to lattices. A bounded lattice is a lattice that additionally has a greatest element 1 and a least element 0, which satisfies 0x1 for every x in L. The greatest and least element is also called the maximum and minimum, or the top and bottom element, and denoted by M, respectively. Every lattice can be converted into a bounded lattice by adding an artificial greatest and least element. And every non-empty finite lattice is bounded by taking the join of all elements, denoted by where. A partially ordered set is a bounded lattice if and only if every finite set of elements has a join and a meet. For every element x of a poset it is trivially true that an, and therefore every element of a poset is both an upper bound and a lower bound of the empty set. This implies that the join of an empty set is the least element, and the meet of the empty set is the greatest element. This is consistent with the associativity and commutativity of meet and join. The join of a union of finite sets is equal to the join of the joins of the sets, and duly. The meet of a union of finite sets is equal to the meet of the meets of the sets, i.e., for finite subsets A and B of a pose at L, and hold, taking B to be the empty set, and which is consistent with the fact that a lattice element Y is said to cover another element X, if Y greater than X, but there does not exist a Z such that Y greater than Z greater than X. Here, y greater than x means x y and x y. A lattice is called graded, sometimes ranked, if it can be equipped with a rank function r from L to, sometimes to z, compatible with the ordering less than r whenever x less than y, such that whenever y covers x, then r equals r plus 1. The value of the rank function for a lattice element is called its rank. Given a subset of a lattice, meet and join restrict to partial functions, they are undefined if their value is not in the subset. The resulting structure on is called a partial lattice. 
In addition to this extrinsic definition as a subset of some other algebraic structure, a partial lattice can also be intrinsically defined as a set with two partial binary operations satisfying certain axioms. Lattices as algebraic structures. General lattice and algebraic structure, consisting of a set L and two binary operations, and, on L is a lattice if the following axiomatic identities hold for all elements A, B, C of L. The following two identities are also usually regarded as axioms, even though they follow from the two absorption laws taken together, idempotent laws. These axioms assert that both are semi-lattices. The absorption laws, the only axioms above in which both meet and join appear, distinguish a lattice from an arbitrary pair of semi-lattices and assure that the two semi-lattices interact appropriately. In particular, each semi-lattice is the dual of the other. Bounded lattice A Bounded lattice is an algebraic structure of the form such that is a lattice. 0 is the identity element for the join operation, and 1 is the identity element for the meet operation. Identity laws. See semi-lattice for further details. Connection to other algebraic structures Lattices have some connections to the family of group-like algebraic structures. Because meet and join both commute and associate, a lattice can be viewed as consisting of two commutative semigroups having the same domain. For a bounded lattice, these semigroups are in fact commutative monoids. The absorption law is the only defining identity that is peculiar to lattice theory. By commutativity and associativity one can think of join and meet as binary operations that are defined on non-empty finite sets, rather than on elements. In a bounded lattice the empty join and the empty meet can also be defined. This makes bounded lattices somewhat more natural than general lattices, and many authors require all lattices to be bounded. The algebraic interpretation of lattices plays an essential role in universal algebra. Connection between the two definitions. An order theoretic lattice gives rise to the two binary operations and the converse is also true. Given an algebraically defined lattice, one can define a partial order on L by setting a B if A equals AB or a B if B equals AB for all elements A and B from L. The laws of absorption ensure that both definitions are equivalent. One can now check that the relation introduced in this way defines a partial ordering within which binary meets and joins are given through the original operations and, since the two definitions of a lattice are equivalent, one may freely invoke aspects of either definition in any way that suits the purpose at hand. Examples for any set A, the collection of all subsets of A can be ordered via subset inclusion to obtain a lattice bounded by A itself and the null set. Set intersection and union interpret meet and join, respectively. For any set A, the collection of all finite subsets of A, ordered by inclusion, is also a lattice and will be bounded if and only if A is finite. For any set A, the collection of all partitions of A, ordered by refinement, is a lattice. The positive integers in their usual order form a lattice, under the operations of min and max. 1 is bottom, there is no top. The Cartesian square of the natural numbers, ordered so that if a C and B D, the pair is the bottom element, there is no top. The natural numbers also form a lattice under the operations of taking the greatest common divisor and least common multiple, with divisibility as the order relation. A B if A divides B, 1 is bottom, 0 is top. Pick two shows of finite sublattice. Every complete lattice is a bounded lattice. This class gives rise to a broad range of practical examples. The set of compact elements of an arithmetic complete lattice is a lattice with a least element, where the lattice operations are given by restricting the respective operations of the arithmetic lattice. This is the specific property which distinguishes arithmetic lattices from algebraic lattices, for which the compacts do only form a joint semi-lattice. Both of these classes of complete lattices are studied in domain theory. Further examples of lattices are given for each of the additional properties discussed below. Counterexamples 
Most partial ordered sets are not lattices, including the following. A discrete pose at, meaning a pose that's such that x y implies x equals y, is a lattice if and only if it has at most one element. In particular the two-element discrete pose at is not a lattice. Although the set 1, 2, 3, 6 partially ordered by divisibility is a lattice, the set 1, 2, 3 so ordered is not a lattice because the pair 2, 3 lacks a join, and it lacks a meet in 2, 3, 6. The set 1, 2, 3, 12, 18, 36 partially ordered by divisibility is not a lattice. Every pair of elements has an upper bound and a lower bound, but the pair 2, 3 has three upper bounds, namely 12, 18, and 36, none of which is the least of those three under divisibility. Likewise the pair 12, 18 has three lower bounds, namely 1, 2, and 3, none of which is the greatest of those three under divisibility. Morphisms of lattices the appropriate notion of a morphism between two lattices flows easily from the above algebraic definition. Given two lattices and a lattice homomorphism from L to M is a function f. Lm such that for all a, b l, f equals f m f, and f equals f m f. Thus f is a homomorphism of the two underlying semi-lattices. When lattices with more structure are considered, the morphisms should respect the extra structure, too. In particular, a bounded lattice homomorphism F between two bounded lattices L and M should also have the following property. F equals 0 M, and F equals 1 M. In the order theoretic formulation, these conditions just state that a homomorphism of lattices is a function preserving binary meets and joins. For bounded lattices, preservation of least and greatest elements is just preservation of join and meet of the empty set. Any homomorphism of lattices is necessarily monotone with respect to the associated ordering relation, see preservation of limits. The converse is not true. Monotonicity by no means implies the required preservation of meets and joins. Although an order-preserving bijection is a homomorphism if its inverse is also order-preserving, given the standard definition of isomorphisms is invertible morphisms, a lattice isomorphism is just a bijective lattice homomorphism. Lattices and their homomorphisms form a category. Sublattices. A sublattice of a lattice L is a non-empty subset of L that is a lattice with the same meet and join operations as L. That is, if L is a lattice and M is a subset of L such that for every pair of elements A, B and M both have an ABBA in M, then M is a sublattice of L. A sublattice M of a lattice L is a convex sublattice of L. If X, Z, Y and X, Y and M implies that Z belongs to M for all elements X, Y, Z in L. Properties of lattices. We now introduce a number of the important properties that lead to interesting special classes of lattices. 1. Boundedness has already been discussed. Completeness A pose it is called a complete lattice if all its subsets have both a join and a meet. In particular, every complete lattice is a bounded lattice, while bounded lattice homomorphisms in general preserve only finite joins and meets. Complete lattice homomorphisms are required to preserve arbitrary joins and meets. Every pose it that is a complete semi-lattice is also a complete lattice. Related to this result is the interesting phenomenon that there are various competing notions of homomorphism for this class of poses. Depending on whether they are seen as complete lattices, complete join semi-lattices, complete meet semi-lattices, or as join complete or meet complete lattices. Note that partial lattice is not the opposite of complete lattice, rather partial lattice, lattice and complete lattice are increasingly restrictive definitions. Conditional completeness A conditionally complete lattice is a lattice in which every non-empty subset that has an upper bound has a join. Such lattices provide the most direct generalization of the completeness axiom of the real numbers. A conditionally complete lattice is either a complete lattice, or a complete lattice without its maximum element 1, its minimum element 0, or both. 
distributivity since lattices come with two binary operations, it is natural to ask whether one of them distributes over the other, i.e., whether one or the other of the following dual laws holds for every three elements A, B, C of L. Distributivity of over A equals. Distributivity of over A equals. A lattice that satisfies the first door, equivalently, the second axiom, is called a distributive lattice. The only non-distributive lattices with fewer than six elements are called M3 and N5, they are shown in picture 10 and 11, respectively. A lattice is distributive if and only if it doesn't have a sublattice isomorphic to M3 or N5. Each distributive lattice is isomorphic to a lattice of sets. For an overview of stronger notions of distributivity which are appropriate for complete lattices and which are used to define more special classes of lattices such as frames and completely distributive lattices, see distributivity in order theory. Modularity for some applications the distributivity condition is too strong, and the following weaker property is often useful. A lattice is modular if, for all elements A, B, C of L, the following R identity holds. Modular identity equals B, C. This condition is equivalent to the following axiom. Modular law as C implies R equals C. A lattice is modular if and only if it doesn't have a sublattice isomorphic to N5. Besides distributive lattices, examples of modular lattices are the lattice of two-sided ideals of a ring, the lattice of submodules of a module, and the lattice of normal subgroups of a group. The set of first-order terms with the ordering is more specific than is a non-modular lattice used in automated reasoning. Semi-modularity A finite lattice is modular if and only if it is both upper and lower semi-modular. For a graded lattice, semi-modularity is equivalent to the following condition on the rank function R. Another equivalent condition is Birkhoff's condition. For each x and y in L, if x and y both cover, then covers both x and y. A lattice is called lower semi-modular if its dual is semi-modular. For finite lattices this means that the previous conditions hold with an exchanged, covers, exchanged with, is covered by, and inequalities reversed. Continuity in algebraicity and domain theory, it is natural to seek to approximate the elements in a partial order by, much simpler, elements. This leads to the class of continuous posés consisting of posés where every element can be obtained as the supremum of a directed set of elements that are way below the element. If one can additionally restrict these to the compact elements of a posit for obtaining these directed sets, then the posit is even algebraic. Both concepts can be applied to lattices as follows. A continuous lattice is a complete lattice that is continuous as a posit. An algebraic lattice is a complete lattice that is algebraic as a posit. Both of these classes have interesting properties. For example, continuous lattices can be characterized as algebraic structures satisfying certain identities. While such a characterization is not known for algebraic lattices, they can be described syntactically via Scott information systems. Complements and pseudo-complements let L be a bounded lattice with greatest element 1 and least element 0. Two elements X and Y of L are complements of each other if and only if, and in the case the complement is unique, we write X equals Y and equivalently, Y equals X. A bounded lattice for which every element has a complement is called a complemented lattice. The corresponding unary operation over L, called complementation, introduces an analog of logical negation into lattice theory. The complement is not necessarily unique, nor does it have a special status among all possible unary operations over L. A complemented lattice that is also distributive is a Boolean algebra. For a distributive lattice, the complement of X, when it exists, is unique. Hating algebras are an example of distributive lattices where some members might be lacking complements. Every element X of a hating algebra has, on the other hand, a pseudo-complement, also denoted X. 
the pseudo-complement is the greatest element y such that x y equals 0. If the pseudo-complement of every element of a hating algebra is in fact a complement, then the hating algebra is in fact a Boolean algebra. Jordan Dedekin chain condition A chain from x0 to xn is a set where the length of this chain is n or 1 less than its number of elements. A chain is maximal if she covers she 1 for all 1 i n. If for any pair x and y where x less than y, all maximal chains from x to y have the same length. Then the lattice is said to satisfy the Jordan Dedekin chain condition. Free lattices any set X may be used to generate the free semi-lattice Fx. The free semi-lattice is defined to consist of all of the finite subsets of X, with the semi-lattice operation given by ordinary set union. The free semi-lattice has the universal property. For the free lattice over a set X, Whitman gave a construction based on polynomials over X's members.